Okay, today we'll discuss the Masonic symbol and some of the passwords of the first three degrees, or also known as the Blue Lodge, and how it relates to the Kabbalah Tree of Life. So if you're not familiar with the Kabbalah Tree of Life, I want to direct you to my other video, Kabbalah Tree of Life 101, where I discuss Star Wars. Um, so the three, three verses in the Bible for the passwords are, you can go to 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 21, for Joaquin ja and Boaz. You can go to Judges chapter 12, verses 5 through 6, for Shibboleth. You can go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 22, for Tubal Cain. All right. So there are three pillars on the tree of life. You have the middle pillar. And you have Yaquin and Boaz. So this is the left pillar. Although you're facing it and it's the right, you got to look at it as you're facing someone. Or this is a person that's facing you. So this is the left side of their head. This is the right side. So this is the part of, this is the logical thinking part of our brain. The 10% or the tithe that we have to pay to this creative side. We're trying to awaken this creative side up. Alright? So, basically, uh, the middle pillar represents your spine. All right. So um, the the pillars Yaquin and Boaz basically represent the balance of polarity. So opposite opposite poles or whatever you have, like hot and cold, uh, male and female, light and dark, mercy and strength, the logical and creative brain, like I already said, uh, left and right brain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, uh, they're basically the pillars or poles that's in the front of the temple of Solomon. So basically when you're dealing with the temple, you should know by now, we're talking about your physical body. So physical body. So the tree of life is your physical body. Um, the tree of knowledge is your soul or light body or energy body. Alright. Um, so what you may not know is uh, you have to be 21. Uh, some other requirements of a mason. But one of the things they won't let you, uh, if you're a lame or if you're a cripple, because uh, it basically implies there's something wrong with your spine if you're lame or crippled. Um, so what the spine houses is something called shemen in Hebrew or holy oil. This ointment can be raised up to the pineal gland in the head. So up the spine, it's an oil that goes in your, it's in your back called shemen in Hebrew. You can be raised up to the first sephira or ketha on the Kabbalah tree of life. Well, this represents your head up here. All right. So you can raise it up to the pineal gland and anoint your head, thus becoming, becoming the anointed one, or Christ. Or, the Shema can go down and out through the penile gland, or penis, thus becoming semen. So you have semen versus shemen. So that's basically what the, um, the allegory in Judges chapter 12 is about. If you go to the allegory, you're going to read... Uh, it's about uh, them crossing the River Jordan. This is the River Jordan in your spine, once again. It's an allegory for your spine. If you couldn't pronounce shibboleth with the sh sound, people who's pronounce it with a s or sibboleth, they were killed. So this is basically semen versus shemen. Not being able to pronounce the sh sound. Not being able to raise it up and make it shemen instead of letting it out as semen. Um, to ver uh, further strengthen my point, what you want to look, go look up is the Hebrew letter Sheen. It's pronounced sheen, but it's spelled looking like shin or the shin like on our leg, our shin bone, but it's pronounced with a long, with a, uh, a e, a, a long e sound, sheen. So <clears throat> to pronounce it with a soft s and where it looks like sin, what you're going to do is if you look at the Hebrew letter, if the dot is on the right side, it's pronounced with a sh sound. If it's on the left side, it's pronounced like the word sin or seen. So what you might not know is the word sinister in French means to the left. In Latin, it means left side. So basically, if you're having sinful thoughts, we're talking about the left side of your brain. So we're dealing with that masculine brain again. So uh, that's what sin really means. It has nothing to do with being born into sin. I mean, we were born into skin, not sin. So that's what this whole thing is about. It's basically about the penile gland against the pineal gland, sibboleth versus shibboleth. Um, semen versus semen, uh, shemen, uh, the physical versus spiritual sex. All right. So, um, in fact, sperm contains spinal fluid. If you just, if you didn't know that, um, in fact, the G 
stands for sex in the Masonic logo. How? The word generation, so regenerating or gener generating a, uh, when, when we have children, basically generating children or offspring. So that's, a, that's, one, um, that's one thing the G stands for. Uh, if you go to the Bible, uh, it also stands for, uh, you know, it stands for sex uh, whenever you know someone. So when Adam knew his wife Eve, then there would be a baby. Uh, when the angels was in the house in the Sodom and Gomorrah, all the townsmen wanted to try to know them. So that's where you get the word sodomy from, because supposedly the angels were supposed to be males or masculine or men, and the, and the men of the town wanted to rape them, basically, to know them. Um, so whenever you see the word know in the Bible, it means sex, because you know it's a baby right after that. So knowledge is equated, or generation or sex is equated with knowledge. All right. The Greek word for knowledge is gnosis. That's where we get our word diagnosis. Like when you get a diagnosis or a health or your car or something like that. Diagnosis means through knowledge. All right. The Hebrew word for knowledge is diath. So when you go, that's the hidden sephira, the hidden sephira on the tree of life. <clears throat> it's uh. So that's where you get that G. So it, it also means it means generation and as well as gnosis or knowledge. So when you go back to the Star Wars story, you know, remember this is Darth Vader. This is the dark side. So you have to, in order to Luke Skywalker, which is the son, which is ruled by this one right here, number um, six. You have to, in order to get to number one from, from number six, you have to cross this path right here. You have to go through the dark side or through the father. You got to know your father before you get back up here. All right. So also the Masons have this thing about crossing the desert. On a camel, or crossing the sand, or on a camel, basically crossing the sand. And uh, in order to cross the sand, the animal to do that is usually a camel. So one thing you want, might want to know: in order to cross this abyss, or doth, or knowledge, or get across the sand, this is the path to go that way. Uh, interestingly enough, the Hebrew letter gimel, which is English, the letter G in English. It's actually representative of a camel. So when you look at the Hebrew letters, I'll do a video on the Hebrew letters and what they mean. But gimel actually is another uh, way of saying camel. So in order to cross the sand, you use a camel, which is a desert animal. Another thing is the number 13. This is the 13th path. It's different paths that leads to all these different sufferers. This, this right here balances everything, left, right, up, and above. This is the center piece, uh, the number 6, tifera or beauty. So this is ruled by the sun. So this is the center sephira on the um, tree of life. This is the only sephira that connects to all the other nine ones. So this is the path number 13. So to get from here to the top is the path number 13, which is Gnosis. So you got to go to get through knowledge, you have to use Gimel and uh, use sex. All right. Doo -doo -doo. All right. So uh, on your body, this right here is where your throat is at. So back to Superman, this is your voice, or Kal-El, or voice of God. Uh, on the Tree of Life, I showed you where it was. So this is this representing your throat. Your pineal gland is right here. This is your throat. This is your heart. These right here are your genitals. And this is where your feet stand at. So that's where you get the term uh, from Masons when they say, standing on your square. So this is when you're standing on your square. Uh, you probably heard, uh, Growing up and going to school, a term called thinking outside the box. So what you want to do is think outside this box. The box is, represents Earth or the physical universe or material universe. Because remember, we fell into skin. So we got trapped into these physical bodies or this physical world. So you want to think outside of the box because we really were light thinkers or light beings. All right. Make sure I don't leave out anything. All right. So lastly, the G also stands for geometry. So up above, you have the compass. Down below is the square. A compass makes circular lines. So you make round circles and curved lines. A square makes straight lines. Everything in nature has, starts off either as a curved line or a straight line. Even the binary code they use only uses ones and zeros. Um, in uh, computers. Um, so this is also representative of the upper triad or the first three sephiras. This square down here, like I already told you, is the tenth sephira or Malkutha, Earth. So anytime you hear anything about a box or a cube or the matrix, this is the matrix. 
uh, in a movie, anything like uh, I think Transformers had something about unearthing a cube. The Thor latest movie was talking about a tesseract, which is another type of cube. And uh, when they discussed the energy before time, they was talking about aether or kether or ether. It's basically another way of talking about melanin. Um, so anything with a box or a cube or a square, this is what they're talking about. <coughs> so this is the matrix that we're trapped in. We're trapped in this illusion, in this box that we think we can't get out of. But we leave it every night when we dream and when we pass away. Or what we're trying to do is use magic to consciously do this when we want to. All right. So some of the other terms you get when you get this box or cube, it's a six-sided box. So six, when you unfold it, you get a cross. So when you unfold this box, basically the word hex, when you hex someone, you're basically telling them, you're basically six of them. Six is the same word for sex. So everything is dealing with sex. So when we fell into skin, we fell in, we, you, we, we fell into skin because someone had sex. So the number of man and a beast is 666. So we fell into carbon, this physical world. We got hexed or crossed or sometimes you get double crossed by people. So you're dealing with the cross right here. What we're trying to do is resurrect and come off the cross like Christ. So we're trying to raise this fluid up to our head. All right, we're trying to keep sheaming and raise it up to our pineal gland instead of letting it out, creating more prisons for uh, souls to get trapped in. So sex is the same word as six. Six is the same word as hex. All right, so when you see these movies about getting hexed uh, and all this stuff like that, so you just need to be able to break down some of these allegorical movies and terms they use when they're talking about boxes and matrices and stuff like that. All right. So I already told you about standing here in the square. So down here is where your feet are. So, and these are where the genitals are. So this represents Tubal Cain. This is the ninth Sephira or Yasad. This is the foundation of it all. Alright? So they talk about Tubal Cain in Genesis chapter 4, verse 22. As being uh he's a descendant of Cain. He basically works with uh he's a metal worker that works with brass. What you may not know is brass is a combination of copper and zinc. Alright? <laughs> If you go to Sephira 7 and 8, they're ruled by Mercury and Venus. Mercury is related to zinc. Venus is related to copper. So you're dealing with 7, 8, and 9. 9 being two volcanoes. This is the foundation because if you raise it up your spine, you're dealing with shaman. You're going to become a shaman. That's what the word shaman is the same word. So you become Christ, a Christ-like. If you don't, you're basically releasing it out through your genital, and what you're doing is bringing it out and down, which is bringing physical things about. So you're going to stand on your square. This is your foundation. You have a choice to either raise it up or create more physical uh, traps. All right. Two ball cane is basically a play on words because when Masons say they password and they say that password, they basically got to grab their genitals. So it's basically just a, a play on words. It's basically your two balls and your penis or phallic. That's what the cane is. Because you'll see, if you see the symbol, it'll be a circle with a cane in the middle and another circle. So you're basically dealing with James Bond or 007. That's where 007 got that number from. Basically, um, James, the nickname for James is Jimmy. Jimmy is a slang term for your penis. So when you when you say your word is your bond or all I have is my balls and my words, same thing Scarface said. He basically talking some Masonic stuff. All you have in, your, in this world is your balls or your foundation and your word. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So I'm just trying to drill this home. You're going to find this stuff in cartoons and all type of stuff. This this is in every movie. So you even got Scarface saying stuff like that. All right? So that's Two Ball Kang. All right. So what you may not know is semen is rich in zinc. Because remember, we're dealing with copper and zinc. All right? He also, Two Ball Kang represents also the prostate gland, or the reproductive system in general. So basically, semen is rich in zinc. The key factor in prostate gland function and reproductive organ growth is zinc. So when you're dealing with zinc, Tubal Cain is a worker in zinc and copper. The word prostate is Greek for one who stands before, or protector or guardian. That's what Tubal Cain is in Sephirina. He represents the protector, or the one who stands guard for. So he's gonna he's the one that's guarding whether or not you want to. Uh, um, resurrect or you're going to stay back down and fall down deeper and deeper into sin or skin alright let me see if I want to touch on anything else so I already talked about sinister meaning left basically the opposite of sinister is Dexter so that's where you get the TV show Dexter from but um, 
the word ambidextrous, most most people just think it just means even handedly, but it basically means the balance. You want to be ambidextrous. You want to balance all this stuff. I'll make sure I don't leave out anything. Uh, copper is closely related. The Hebrew word for copper is closely related related to uh, the Hebrew word for serpent. So you have to do your own research on that. I kind of made a note of it. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Nakash or something like that is the Hebrew word for serpent, but it really means shiny one. So you're dealing with uh, uh, shiny metals or something like that. Because you know Moses had a copper serpent in uh, in uh, the Old Testament. So anything with serpents or copper, it's pretty much, they're talking about the same thing. The two pillars were made out of brass. Brass and copper are basically interchangeable. Um, okay, let's talk about the prostate. Talk about all the sufferers. Um, let's talk about the compass and the square. All right. Now, so another thing you might have heard is like them calling themselves the widow's son. So you might hear uh, Masons refer to themselves as the widow's son. All right, so what you want to know, the widow is, if you got to go to a Gnostic story, uh, in Gnosticism, so you can just uh, Google Sophia. She basically represents the third sephirah. She's the widow. Basically, what she did, she decided to make a creation or emanate or manifest a being without the help of the father or the widower in this case or the other two in this upper triad. What she did was, so this is the same one who brought the energy down here because this is ruled by Saturn. So this Saturn, which later became Satan in the mythologies, this is the, the planet, the earth is uh, ran by Saturn energy. All right. So this is the same story in Gnosticism. So Sophia decided to create a being. Uh, that being ended up being monstrous looking. So she was so ashamed of what she had done by creating without the whole divine total. All three of these together create divinity. So we need all three of them. This is the Holy Trinity right here. Father, Son, and the Ghost, or man, woman, and child. Um, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Um, so she was so ashamed of what she had created without the help of the other two in the triad that she ended up covering the the demiurge or named Yadabloth. I can't pronounce it. Uh, let's go to Gnosticism. So this is the name right here. Some called Samuel, Cyclist, sometimes called Nebro, and other names. Uh, Ariel, Ariel, sometimes. Ariel, sometimes. But basically, you can just look up uh, Gnosticism, Sophia, and you'll get the story. But she decided to clothe him in a cloud and um, made a throne for him to stay within. This is the throne he stayed within. He basically was the king of these two provinces. And he decided to create humans or physical world, the material world. So that's what he did. Now, here's the thing about the story. He was cut off from his mama. So he was below this abyss or this line. So he didn't have the knowledge that anything existed above this line. So he lacked the knowledge. So he didn't even know he had a mother or anything, anybody or anyone else as existed. So he had no idea about uh, upper realities or where he came from. So in that turn, he thought he was the only one existing. And he was the supreme God. So he later on became a jealous God. And he became Yahweh of the Hebrew Bible. So in the Bible, that's who Yahweh became. So this is the story about Yahweh, actually. So it created the physical world. Or the Matrix. All right. Um, what he didn't know when he created humans is that it was a divine spark, basically from his mother. Since he had no idea where he came from, he didn't know he had the divine spark. But it was a divine spark that's in all of us. So the Gnostic, the point of the whole Gnostic story is to get us to awaken that little divine spark that we have, that our so-called creator thought they had no idea of that we supposed to awaken, so we can raise back up to a uh, rightful position up top. All right, so I just want to make sure I don't leave anything out. So like I said, just gonna do your own research. Uh, I just want to point out uh, the father over here, the second sephirah is ruled by Uranus. I told you in another video that Uranus, Uranus, is actually Greek for heaven. So there's really no such thing as heaven and hell. So we just talk dealing about the second sephirah when we talk about that. Also, if you want to watch a TV show called Da Vinci's Demons, it uh, talks about the lion-faced serpent. It's basically just another uh, it's another version of uh, Idolaboth. So uh, the lion-faced serpent, that's, that's what the Vision Demons is all about. I was attracted to it because uh, all the episodes in season one were based on tarot cards. And I'll do a video on tarot cards uh, soon. Alright, hope you enjoy and thank you.